Hey there, brilliant ACCA students. My name is Steve Willis. In this video, I'm going to help you pass your upcoming performance management exam. I'm going to take you through cost, volume, profit analysis. We'll look at the past exam question, hair events, from the practice exam number two. It's a tricky section B question. Guys, in this video, I'll take you through the first three questions of the scenario. If you'd like all five of the questions, please click on the link here. You can become a member of my channel and you'll have access to all five questions. All right, guys, let's get started. Question hair events. Friends, you can find this in the ACCA practice platform in the PM resources under practice exam number two. It's in section B. You can also just download the question as a PDF. I've got the link ready for you below in the description. So guys, before you continue watching the video, go into the practice platform, give the question a try on your own, and then continue watching and we'll go through the first three questions together. Welcome back, friends. I've got the exam open here virtually. I've got screenshots of the questions. Now, remember the time management rule, 1.8 minutes per mark or 1.7 if you want to give yourself a little bit of buffer. So if we go with 1.7 minutes, that's 17 minutes to do this question with five sub-questions. It's a lot of work. What you need to do, scan through here and look for the easier theoretical questions. And if you go to the last question and you do that one first, question number 20, you're going to see that this is just a general theory question, okay, about CVP. So you can go ahead and get easy marks here on this last question. Then you run out of time doing the difficult numbers. Okay, so let's start with question 20. And we see it's a theory question. So, and it's about cost, volume, profit, CVP, under decision making. Now, before you do anything, let's look at the answers here. And we see that three are correct or two are correct. So sometimes it's easier to find the wrong answers and eliminate those than it is to find the correct answers. So if you haven't done this at home, pause the video, see if you can get it. Well, first thing I do is I eliminate statement three. Cost, volume, profit analysis assumes that fixed costs will change if output increases or drops. Well, that is false. Fixed costs, by definition, do not change unless they call it a stepped cost when it changes at some, it changes incrementally at some level of activity. Okay, but fixed costs are fixed. So statement three is wrong. We start eliminating. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that, friends. In a real past exam question, we can get to the correct answer using good exam technique by elimination. Okay, now can we eliminate four? Sales prices are recognized to vary at different activity levels, especially if higher volume of sales is needed. Well, economists have that assumption that the total revenue is curving downwards, okay? But us management accountants, unless they say there's a discount, we assume that the revenue line will be straight and the total cost line will be straight. So, statement four, incorrect. Can we check statements one and two? Sure we can. Production levels and sales levels are assumed to be the same. That's right, we're not tracking production costs at a different activity level than our sales. Okay, there's no inventory movement considered in the CVP analysis. CS ratio can be used to indicate relative. When something is relative, it's a percentage, something over something. Yes, the CS ratio is a percentage, and we can use it to compare the profitability of products with different prices and different costs. So there you have it. 
Question 20, made easy. Okay guys, I'm back at the front of the list. Now I'm gonna do question 16. I cleared the easy theory question, now I'm gonna get into the numbers. And I see this, I read the requirement first, margin of safety. So, you cannot even think about doing this question if you do not know the formula, okay? So, the formula for margin of safety, if we draw a quick break even chart, we have some revenue, total revenue. We have some total costs. We have some break even point there. We have some budgeted activity level, blue line here, where we are, right? The margin of safety is how much our activity level can drop before we hit break even. Let's look at this and the answers very carefully. They want it in relative terms, okay? So it's gonna be the change over the revenue. How much can the revenue drop in percentage terms, okay? So some of these distractors, maybe one of these numbers is the absolute drop in activity, or maybe one of them is the drop in revenue. So be very careful here. Now we, that we know what we're looking for, my formula then, is going to be my budgeted activity level. And let's just say this, budgeted activity. Okay. Then I'm going to have my budgeted activity level minus my break even point, right? That's gonna be the change in units. So we need to find a break even point. And if you remember how to calculate a break even point, well, that's going to be the fixed costs divided by the contribution per unit. Fixed costs divided by contribution per unit. So, you need to dig around in this question. You've got to find some budgeted activity level. You've got to find some fixed costs. You'll have to calculate a contribution per unit. And if you remember, contribution per unit will be the price minus the total variable costs, production, non-production, equals contribution per unit. So if you're stuck on this, pause the video here, try it on your own, then we'll do it together. All right, let's make sure we read carefully again. If Hair Events decides to host only the full, right? So we're going to read carefully when we understand what we're looking for, the margin of safety figures, but only for one of the products. So do we have a revenue for the full? Yes, we do. Okay. Do we have a variable cost? We do. We could get a total variable cost if we added those up. Could we total up the fixed costs, sure we could. So the total fixed costs, that comes to 385,000, doesn't it? Okay. The total variable cost comes to 1820. Add those figures up and we get an 1820. Okay, so the first thing we can do is get the break even point now. Do we have the selling price? We do. So, first step, let's get the contribution per unit. C per U, contribution per unit, abbreviation. You're going to be doing this on scratch paper in the exam, right? So, just use quick abbreviations. And that's going to be the 55 minus the 1820. That comes to... $36.80. Now, second thing we can do is get the break even point. So we will divide in units. We will divide that 385,000 by the 3680. Okay, guys, and what does that come to? 10, 4, 6, 2. Now, last thing that we need is the budgeted number of entries. And that's right here. They expect the maximum they'll get is 20 
20,000. Okay, 20,000. Now we can almost do this with mental math, can't we? Because we know we're dropping from 20 to 10, 4, 6. So it's not quite 52, it's almost 52, right? So the answer is going to be the 47.7. Okay, so you don't be afraid to use mental math. Don't be afraid to use deduction when it's time. If we want to prove that, let's just come here. Step three, margin of safety. Well, that's going to be 20,000 entries minus the break even, 10, 4, 6, 2. That's the change, right? That's the drop. And if we divide that over, divide that by the starting place, 20,000 units, we will get, drum roll please, 47.7. answer everyone is the second option. Our guess was correct. Okay, moving on to the next question, question 17. Let's read the requirement. Assuming that the, that the race entries are sold in a constant mix based on the expected entry numbers, what is the sales revenue needed to achieve break even. So now we need to remember the formula break even point in revenue. So the break even point in revenue that's going to still be the total fixed costs divided by the weighted average CS ratio, right? So the average, weighted average CS ratio. So we already have the fixed costs from the previous exercise, okay? So now we just need to get the average CS ratio. How can we do that? The weighted average, excuse me. So let's get busy on that. I'll do the weighted average CS ratio slightly differently than the model answer. So what I'm going to do is get the total sales and the total contribution. Okay, so total sales and then we need total contribution. Okay, so two things to do. Well, total revenue, that's going to be easy, isn't it? We know we're going to have 20,000 full marathon, and that's 55, okay, and 30 for the half marathon, and we'll get 14, right? So that's going to be 20 times 55 plus 30 times 14. Okay, 20 times 55 plus 14 time plus 14 times 30, that comes to 1520 total revenue in thousands. Okay, remember it's in thousands, but we'll do the same thing here. Now, we said before that the contribution was in our last working, we figured that out. It was 36.8. So 20 times 36.8. plus 14 multiplied by the contribution per unit here. And we can just do a very quick side working. Do we know the selling price? Yes, we do, $30. Do we know the variable costs? Look at that, 12. So 30 minus 12 is 18. And that comes to 988. So the weighted average CS ratio guys that's going to be the 988 over the 1520. 
and that is equal to 65%, 0 0.65. Okay, so last step, let's just come back up here. Our fixed costs, one more time, 385,000. Weighted average contribution to sales ratio is 0 0.65. So the solution, friends, is 592308. That's in monetary U value dollars. Is that there? And rounding it to the nearest thousand answer, guys, is right here, the third one. Brilliant students, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you did, please throw down a like. And if you'd like to watch the remaining two questions in the scenario, the link is right here. You just need to become a member and you can have access to the full debrief video. All right, guys, good luck on your upcoming PM exam.